Uh, All right, check one, two, one, two. This is the Hip Hop Eds Podcast. I'm Mr. Bon Sound here with a very special guest. Now, I've probably known this guy longer than he's known me. Uh, At least I've known about him, but I've never had the chance to actually sit down and talk with him and have a full-on conversation with him. So I just want to bring you guys. This is probably the most in tune with his emotions MC out of the city of Calgary. And I want to bring you guys to him. Or I want to bring you guys uh, this podcast. This is James Colt. Hey, what's up, bro? What's good? What's good? I'm just chilling. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, you said before you were getting here that uh, you're you're packing to go to LA, right? Yeah. Yeah. I leave tomorrow. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And what do you what are you going to do in LA? Uh, just make some more songs and uh, film a video or two. With uh with my homie Bobby from Texas and then uh, my friend Boy Jam who's a producer from Calgary. Yeah, I see. He yeah. did a bit of the production yeah. on on the the project. He yeah, did a he bit did. of the production. Yeah, he produced two songs on there, and we made a couple other ones that we're gonna take there and work on in L.A. And then also we're shooting a video for this song that me and Bobby have called Doubt that was on his last album Clarity. Okay. Yeah. So we're doing a video for that one. So like going straight to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. good. I mean, the, yeah, that's the main reason I'd go there, you know, is to just try and, like, grind and meet people and connect and, like, network, I guess. It sounds like cliche, but it's true. Like, right. that's just what I'm trying to do is meet people and put myself out there more, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's I good. I figure that's, a, that's the way. Or right. No, yeah. I agree. Um, well, the, the thing I want to get to on this on this podcast is one thing I'd like to touch on with the artists that are here is... I definitely w- want to get to know the music and the artistry and just, I guess, the work. Mm-hmm. Before we get into any of that, I, I kind of want to get oh. to know who you are as, as a person. Yeah, for sure. So, obviously, the, the, your real name is Colton Stankowski for anybody that doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. Some people know that, some don't. Oh, uh, do you, yeah. Are you okay if that's out yeah, there? No, it's cool. It's going to be <laughs> it's gonna be on Wikipedia anyway someday. Okay, so. work. That's good. That's yeah. All right, that's true. That's good yeah. foresight. Yeah. Um, and so I want to kind of get to know who Colton Stankowski is to you. Yeah. First, before we get into who James Colton totally, is. Totally, because they're like they're not the same person. You know? Okay. Colton Stankowski is definitely a lot different from James Cole. Like. Explain. James Cole is like more of like just like one side of me almost. Like it's like when I make music and stuff like that, and I'm a, and I make art. It's like a darker side of me. It's like part of me that I like have to release into the world. I guess like my like. Uh, like darkest emotions or like darkest thoughts or like whatever is going on in my life because I'm the type of person who like bottles it up like Colton you know is not good at like expressing emotions all the time okay so that's when I like I make the music and I I put it through there and express it but at the same time it's not the exact same you know it's like just a side of me I guess so it's like an outlet for you to express your emotions yeah yeah exactly but that that's like that's what people ask me like why do I make music and shit like that it's like I just like I have to or else like I'll go crazy and I like because like it's hard for me to tell people how I feel half the time. So you, so you, you would know? say Colton's more like uh, not as, as expressive kind of guy. Yeah, and le- only like like close friends and stuff like that, or like people I've known for a while and I'm like comfortable with and shit like that. But like in my music, I just let it all out, you know. And okay. then the whole whole world, everyone gets to see that. Worse, <laughs> you know. Well, where did you grow up and, like, where were you born? Were you born in Calgary? Yeah, I was born and raised here Born in and Calgary. raised in Calgary. Yeah, nice. yeah. That's good. Yeah. And one thing I always like to ask artists is, um, and anybody who's a creative in the city, is creating in Calgary. I think mm-hmm. sometimes what I hear from artists is there's a bit of a ceiling in Calgary. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's, that may be for multiple reasons, but... You've been creating for how many years now? Uh, like five ish. Right, like that. so it's it's been some time, right? Yeah, I started when I was like sixteen, like seriously releasing it, I guess, and now I'm twenty one. So, so how would you say it is creating in Calgary? How would you say it is making music in Calgary, uh, and putting your name out there? Like you gotta, you definitely just gotta do that shit yourself. You know, like you you can't wait around for someone to like give you a handout or like teach teach you everything like you got the you got the internet (laughs) just got to figure that figure that shit out like 
that's that's you know that's that's a big part of it now especially you can you can do this from anywhere in the world but in calgary i definitely was blessed to have the opportunity to like go out there and meet people and like find studios i could go to and find places i could meet other artists or i was just always looking on the internet for other people in the city doing shit and through that it's just like i don't know it's like there there kind of is a ceiling but i think like we can like the city's growing and it can it can expand a it lot. Is. And there's a scene developing. It's it just a matter is. of time till it's really like take the notice is taking is taken and it just needs like one person to really break to break through. Exactly. Yeah. Then there's gonna be no ceiling for anybody yeah. to Like we've had people close and people that are like doing really good shit, but no one even like pays that much attention in Calgary. That's the problem. Like uh, you could be like really popping on the internet and like people in Calgary won't even necessarily notice because it's like not that big of a population compared to a bigger city. Exactly. I think you know? obviously there's a numbers. Uh, it, it's a numbers game. Yeah, uh, yeah. As far as like there's, it's just not that big of a city compared mm-hmm. to like Toronto or LA or yeah. or New York. So obviously yeah. we have to deal with that. Uh-huh. Um, but like you said, I think it, it'll just take one person to break mm-hmm. through. Yeah, and but there definitely is like. There's like a, a place for for it here, you know. Okay. Like we've, we've definitely been having lots of really cool shows these past couple of years. Like bigger bigger artists have been coming into the city, which is cool. Stuff like that, yeah. and that, that gives opportunities for local artists to open Absolutely. and stuff like that, and shed some light on them. So I don't know. It's growing. It's just gonna it's gonna be a matter of time. Okay. I, I feel you know. And one thing that I like you said is you have to get it on your own. And yeah. this is the one thing that I respect so much about your approach to to just the way you create Mm -hmm. and even just like uh even like uh just everything about how you're going about making the music is like you're getting it on your own yeah you're not waiting for anybody to give you a handout yeah totally like you're definitely being proactive in your approach and one thing that i noticed because i mean i try to do music too yeah. Uh, I'm not pursuing that seriously anymore. <laughs> I realize, fuck, that shit is hard. <laughs> yeah, it takes it takes time for sure. Yeah, but one thing I, I re- and I t- trust me when I did that, I gained such a respect for artists. Yeah, because it's like this shit is a lot harder than people think. Yeah, it is. Even just getting booked for a show is like you got to ask somebody, and then you got to be in the right position, and you got to oh, it's yeah. it's a whole process. Yeah, totally. That's like one of the hardest parts about it too. It's like I'm a very like. Uh, anxious like socially kind of weird i guess uh so like going out to clubs and like trying to like be like what's up man like check out my music <laughs> blah blah and going to like promoters be like you put me like that's not really me right so it's just like i just figured eventually i'll just do what i'm doing and eventually people will like catch on and i guess they are so that's good yes yeah. definitely um so one thing i wanted to ask you is do you consider yourself a hip-hop now the reason I yeah. ask this, you say yes. Yeah. You say th- yes. Okay, that's dope. Yeah, that's definitely a a big part of me. I'm like a a a, a, bl- a blend of a bunch of genres, you know. Right. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. Like so many artists are doing that now, and it's awesome. And it's like it pushes the sound forward and stuff like that. But I, I definitely would still say like a lot of my music is like mainly hip hop. Okay. Yeah. Like or- I'm not. I'm not. I'm not always like straight up like rapping bars and shit like that you know right. but like it has like has the tempo and the, the shit i'm talking about and what i'm yeah i don't know yeah totally so how would you describe your style of music it's yeah it's like alternative mixed with with hip-hop pretty much you know like i don't know if, if alternative is the right word i guess that's kind of like a big it's kind of a big uh you know term for it like it's also like inspired by a lot of like emo music and um just rock music growing up i listened to and shit like that a bit and i just try and like blend all of it together like the new my new song lonely sounds like pop punk mixed with like trap okay. and shit like that you know so it's like kind of all over the place and it's always changing but now it has like a lot of live instrumentation and guitar and stuff like that because that's like in my background like i grew up playing guitar and going along with that shit like when i when i first learned the music that's what i was doing you know i took guitar lessons and stuff like that growing up so i think now that i like when i really got into rap i was like yo i gotta take what i liked from my childhood and what i like now and put it together and because that's me you know that's who i am right so i don't know people call it emo rap or sad boy rap or like anything like that i don't know it's kind of hard to put an exact like 
like <laughs> genre, I don't yeah I don't know it's, I don't even know what genre my stuff is but like it's like a lot of things okay. <laughs> which is kind of wild but and what do you yeah. feel about like the titles that people put onto it it doesn't really matter you know whatever whatever works for people you know as long as they enjoy the music that's all that matters to me word you know as long as they like listen to that song like yo I like that song and as long as it like makes them feel something or it's stuck in their head or something like that right yeah. that's all that's all I really want is to word like, um, you said that you you grew up pay, playing the guitar. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it a lot anymore. You know, I I'm, I'm not like the best guitar player in the world. Okay. Like I can play like simple chords and stuff like that now. But like I was when I was younger, I could definitely went a lot harder harder on the guitar. But I want to like brush up on it and like, maybe learn to play more of my songs on guitar and do that live eventually. That's one of my goals, I think, for my career is later on be able to play my songs live and shit like that. Yeah. Which I'm not there yet, but maybe when I get the time to really work on my guitar skills more, I will. But I really like when I got to like my teenage years and I really got into rapping, I kind of like forgot about it for a while and kind of put it to the side. Same with basketball, you know, because I was playing ball. For yeah, a long you were time. playing ball and you were good. Yeah. I think you yeah. were on the, you were actually. Yeah, I played, at, I played at Bob for a year. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, but you like as soon as, as soon as I really yeah. got into rap, I was like gone with that. So I really got into <laughs> rap and then. I kind of just like focused on using my voice as my instrument instead of like a guitar. But then now I guess it all kind of came full circle. So that's dope. It did because now yeah. you're definitely blending both of the genres. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like one thing is exclusive to the yeah. other. Yeah, that's why I think like an artist like Post Malone is so big right now because he has like he has like rap songs, he has like pop songs, he has like even like country or like indie or whatever you want to call it. Like his his stuff is all over the place, and he can hit so many different like demographic demographics of people. You know, it could reach so many people because there's so many different sounds, and that's that's kind of what I'm on to, I, I guess. You know? Okay. So yeah. who would you say is some of your biggest musical influences when you first started out and even up to today? Who would be some of your biggest musical influences? Uh, when I first got into rapping, you know, I was listening to like like classics. When I, I was listening to like Biggie and shit like really? that and Big L and uh, MF Doom and Nas and, and Pac too, you know, like because I had to. I wanted to like really study up on all my history as I really, I just got so obsessed with rap. I had to go back you know, and just discover everything and listen. So that's what I did. And then, um, but like, those were like early, but the, the artists that really shaped what I got into now is more like Kanye West and Kid Cudi and even Drake. And yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it's was, it was kind of a bit of everything, but those guys were really important to me. Mac Miller, for sure, RIP. You know, Mac Miller, like, I used to rap along to Nikes on My Feet, and, like, that was how I'd try and, like, yeah. learn to rap, bro. Yo, that and, like, and Biggie uh, hypnotized and shit like that. Like, when I first started, I'd, like, try and rap along in my headphones, you know? Like, I'm trying to hit every single word. <laughs> and it was just, like, artists like that. That's wild that you would say that, because yeah. I would not I would not expect that out of you. Yeah. I'm just listening to your music nowadays. Maybe yeah, it's, it's completely different. It's nothing like that, right. but that's, like, what I came from. Really? You know, when I, when I first really got into music. And then it just kind of evolved and kept changing over time. Because, like, I think Cuddy was very important because he was very melodic and he was emotional. Right. And he talked about depression Absolutely. and suicide and drugs and lots of the same uh, concepts and themes that I have. So, like, Cuddy is probably one of my favorite artists ever. And he really, like, uh, paved the way for artists like me, I guess, you know? Okay. Yeah. So he's definitely up there. So what did you think about the new project? I haven't listened to it, The Kid See Ghost. Yeah. I, oh, what yeah. What do you think about it? Uh, I heard it was getting I mean, a lot like, of out praise. of all those Kanye albums that have come out this year that he's produced on or released, I think that was the best one. I feel like it was the only one that wasn't really rushed, and it felt like they really put their time into it. And uh, speaking of, like, the genre betting stuff, there was that song on there, Free. It just got nominated for a rock Grammy, which is pretty crazy. That's wild. So Kanye and Cuddy could win a, a rock award, <laughs> which is pretty dope. But that's, that's, that's wild. a crazy coincidence how we were just talking about how... Uh, how genre bending my music is yeah 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 for sure um so why did you first start making music um, oh actually we said did we even get into when you first started making music when did you first start making yeah, music i was like i'm probably like 14 or 15 and i just bought like an xbox headset like i had turtle beaches or whatever for playing call of duty and i just like put that into my computer and opened audacity and just found like little wayne instrumental or something like that or like no. a, an atmosphere instrumental i was really into atmosphere and lots of underground rap too around that time and 
I just try and like rap over other people's beats and try and write to it or like emulate the flows and stuff to try to figure out like how did he write like this how did he do that so that was kind of how I got into it and then eventually I like bought I went with my friend and we bought like a hundred dollar mic in like grade 10 or something like that and f ever since then I just never really looked back you know right. I had lots of different like stage names I went through a lot of different changes and like trying to figure out my identity and what I really like fit with but so what was your first <laughs> like rap name six years that Oh, I don't even know. I know that the one that most people would know was like Essence, and then I was Stankowski. For Stankowski, a while. I remember. You know? I, I started listening around the, the era of Stankowski. Yeah, I shouldn't have said it. You even said Essence because that's really bad. That was like really cringy. But Stankowski <laughs> was like, when I started doing that, I feel like that was when it was cool. I was like, yo, people are like enjoying this stuff. Like people from my school or people like online are like thinking this is kind of dope. So that kind of like pushed me forward to keep doing it. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to my brother Juan huh? at June Jamins. I don't know if he wants his information. <laughs> yeah, shout out, out Juan. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been putting me on to your music yeah. for the longest time. <laughs> like he's been a fan of your music yeah. for a minute. He That's was the so one even like he would tell me like even when I was in grade ten or whatever, yeah. grade eleven, he'd be yeah. like, "Yo, Colton just released a new, uh, new." Or sorry, Colt just released a new a new track. You gotta yeah. check this out. You gotta check this out. Yeah. So he was always on to like your. That's music. true. Yeah. That's so, respect. Yeah. Like shout That's out. Fire. That's so sick. But I had like I had like I really did try back with the Stanky OC shit too. Like, I thought I thought that was really like that was an important time for me too because I was really just like trying everything and just experimenting and trying to figure out who I was. You know, like I was doing remixes and stuff like that even for a while. And yeah, I, that was like, that was right. when I actually like, I feel like I first got like online recognition sort of was when I did like some remixes and stuff like that. Like the, and they, some of those started like popping off a little bit and I was like, yeah, whoa, you were getting actually, views. I was like, people are actually paying attention. Maybe I got, I just got to keep going. Right. <laughs> and, you know? And I think you were one of the, the, the first artists to really get those kind of views yeah. on like your remixes. Yeah. I in Calgary, not many people would know that or, like, pay attention to that stuff. Like, no one has really, like, it's been, I'm under the radar still, I feel like, you know? But it is what it is. Word. You know? It's okay to be underrated or, like, some shit like that. I don't really, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Even though, like, I could get, like, like, that video, I was, like, 16. It had, like, over 100,000 views, you know? That's Like, that's wild. crazy. Yeah, people would I get kill the, for those kind of numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and then the video's <laughs> down. I haven't seen it in ages. And looking back, it was really cringy. But, like, it just got me where I am today. I just... Absolutely. It's a start. You got to make mistakes and, like, learn from it. And just, and just keep pushing forward. Use that as motivation and fuel, you know? Like, even with your stuff, if you're, like, if you don't feel, like, maybe, oh, this video could have been better, or I, I could have done this. It's just like, oh, you just do it next time. You just keep pushing, eventually. Right. Yeah. Instead of trying to do, do well on it or anything that, like yeah, that, that was you the just way, gotta keep it moving. Yeah, that was the way I looked at it. I just I just kept my head forward. I was like, I didn't want to do anything else with my life, you know? <laughs> like, I, I knew, like, from, like, early, at that stage, that this is what I wanted to do, so... That's dope. Yeah. Um, now, one thing I wanted to say is, and I'm going to be completely honest, your version of, of hip-hop music mm -hmm. isn't necessarily what I would listen to on a regular basis. Yeah. So it was definitely a, a challenge for me at first mm -hmm. to listen to the project, yeah. Lone Sun, that's out now. You can get it on SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, everywhere. everywhere. Right. Okay, word. Pretty much. Um, I noticed it wasn't on title. I used title. Really? It wasn't on title. Oh, what? I can't find you on title. That's crazy. Oh, shit. I thought I was on title, man. Yeah, I, I, would hold, I would love to have you on title because that's what I yeah. use. Dang. That's but, crazy. But man. anyway, it's pretty much on anywhere that you can Yeah, find pretty music. much everything. Okay, like dope. Apple Music. But yeah, your music oh. isn't necessarily something I'd listen to like on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, I'd listen to what people would categorize as like lyrical rap yeah or lyrical yeah. hip-hop yeah exactly i think lots of people would say that like lyrical conscious rap is like hip-hop and what i do is like is like pop or like hip-hop or something like that but I, I think at the end of the day now it's like it's all hip-hop hip hip has like spread in so many different ways that it's like crazy right at this point but it's yeah and I, I see what you're saying. And I'd be ignorant to like try and and say your music isn't hip hop because yeah. I just. I but I know like what you mean. I'm not man. necessarily like really lyrical or anything like that, you know. Right. And, and I know that, you know. So, so what would you say to somebody who listens to that kind of music? Yeah. 
to try and get them to maybe open up to your yeah. your music. They could they could still uh, get something from it, you know. It's not like super wordy. I'm not gonna be having like super crazy flows, but I'll like say something that'll like you'll relate to or like understand. Like oh, something like that happened to me in my life, you know. So at the end of the day, like relatability is a pretty big thing. That that's what I've gathered from people telling me what they've how they've kind of like felt from my music, and they're like, well, it was just. When you said that line or something like this, it just connected with me, or it was like this part of the song was, you know, there's just like certain lyrics, I guess, that stand out to people or something. But I, I tell people that it's just like just keep an open mind and listen for like the sound and the feeling and the emotion, and not necessarily the rap skills, you know? Okay. Yeah. So you're listening to it for different. Yeah. Something different out of it. You're not listening. Yeah, it's to more it for like, like the feeling and the mood and like. And the tone of the song and not like uh yeah i agree and i, I it's kind of hard to explain but you no know I, mean. I, I don't think it's hard to explain at all i think yeah. like um what you're saying is exactly true mm -hmm. um and definitely um i don't know if i want to say it now but you know what fuck it i'll say it now so when i first listened to the project yeah um and i was I remember I was uh, I was doing because I work part time. I skip the dishes, yeah. so like I listen to my music when I'm doing a shift or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I remember I, I put on the project, and I was just like, like, obviously you have to kind of understand. I was in work mode. Yeah. So I'm like I'm trying to get pumped. I'm, yeah. I'm in work mode, right? <laughs> so I put on the project, yeah. and I was just like, huh? Like I immediately felt very anxious. Yeah. That was my first immediate emotion. Yeah. And and I for a while I was just like, why do I feel this way? Yeah. And it was so strong to the point that I had to call my brother yeah. and be like, yo, why do I feel this way when I'm listening to the music? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like such a strong emotion that I'd never felt before. Yeah. Like from That's music. what I mean though, like it just makes you like feel something, you know? Like it makes you feel some type of way regardless whether it's like good or bad. You know, <laughs> but here's the thing. Like at first, I didn't like the way it made me feel. Yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe I got to give it another, another listen. So I gave it another listen, and I was like, okay, I, I can pick out my favorite songs here and there. I like these songs. I don't mm -hmm. like these songs, and kind of just like started picking out my favorite songs. Yeah. And then it wasn't until this morning today, which is what I was telling you, yeah. I woke up late this morning and I was feeling like shit, and I was just like, fuck. And immediately, the first song that was in my head was vacant. Yeah. We wake up in the morning feeling vacant. And yeah. I was like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> this is exactly what this music is for. Yeah. And I and I was listening to it because I had to go buy some shit at the store and it was there was clouds over the sky and it just wasn't a yeah. good day. Yeah. And I was listening to the music and I was like, This is what this is for. Mm -hmm. When I'm having a shitty day, when I'm not feeling good. Yeah. This is exactly when the music connects with me. Totally. So that's when I and I it took me a minute. Yeah. Like, if I just would have based it on my first experience... Because you're trying to listen to it and, like, looking for, like, some hype or, exactly. like, to, like, pump you up, but it's not really that. No. Yeah. I think you might get a couple songs out of that, maybe, like, ten toes down. Yeah, yeah. The, in the second, like, the second half of the album gets a little more uh, hype and stuff like that. Right. But, but the first half is definitely, like, slower. Because it's supposed to feel like going through, like, heartbreak and then, like, recovering from it and then feeling better and moving on. So, oh, it's like, okay. so it's like so it's like so it's like the first uh, like the first half kind of is probably a bit more dark and stuff like that and it's like sadder almost and then it gets like better like it, when it gets to like um, after like Black Rover around Vacant and Black Rover that's when it like kind of switches you'll notice word yeah yeah I definitely now that you're telling me yeah. that now I definitely that's noticed. probably and it's also like what you were saying um, about how it was like you know it was really dark out and you're or, like gray and that it kind of like yeah. related to that. I think my music is a good representation of like being a product of Calgary because it's, lots of times it can be very gloomy, it can be very gray, and very it's very like, snowy for absolutely. a long time, and it's very isolating. Yes, and you can feel very like stuck and trapped in Calgary and stuff like that. Absolutely. So I think moving. that's why um, you know my music is kind of a product of that, which I think is cool, Word. and lots of people in Calgary will like that. So that's that's another thing to look forward to if you're someone who's going to check it out. Definitely think about that if you're from Calgary. Perfect. Well, yeah. you know what? That leads into... I want to play a track. Yeah, for sure. Off the project. I got it up on SoundCloud right now. I'm going to edit it so we can actually play the full track okay. on the episode. But what track would you want to start off with? I'll let you pay. Off the project. Um, We're on SoundCloud right now. 
the first track, what, what would you say? What would you want to play? Mm. Are you looking for a shorter one? Like, Black Rover is pretty good. Black Rover? You want to play that yeah. one? Yeah, it's cool. I'm doing a video for this one, I think, so. Okay. Yeah. Let's well, do. I don't want to give that away yet, but, like, uh, yeah. Black do Rover? that one, I guess, yeah. Okay, let's play it. I know what you're thinking I won't say it, I'll let it sink in Been smoking, been drinking Call you up and you just start screaming I know it's over Late nights, I'm hardly sober Missing your head on my shoulder Tear stains and all black rover Tear stains and all black rover Trash, take my love, I don't need it back Shame on me, no shame on you Blame on me, no blame on you Take my soul, rip it on my chest Leave me with a hole there so I can feel the stress Cause you know I'm still a mess and you know I'm still depressed So you can leave me lonely right until my death I'm a sad boy, I'm a let down, I'm a no one Deadbeat, I'm a dead boy, don't fuck with no one Lost souls, swerving potholes, doing burnouts Teacher said I won't be shit, look how I turned out Teacher said I won't be shit, look how I turned out Pack shows, get a whole city turned out I know what you're thinking I won't say it, I'll let it sink in Been smoking, been drinking Call you up and you just start screaming I know it's over Late nights, I'm hardly sober Missing your head on my shoulder Tear stains and all black rover One thing about that track I think is kind of like uh, it's a little polarizing because it's like the instrumental sounds upbeat and you sound like you're actually overcoming a lot mm -hmm. but then you say tear stains in the all black rover yeah so it's like even though you're having a good day you still recognize it's like damn st tear stains in the all black rover yeah so why like what was your creative process when you made that track what was the mindset when you made that track um I don't know it was I would just as soon as the beat came on, I just like the melodies just start kind of coming to my head, and I was just like thinking about like fights I had and stuff like that, or just like I don't know. I've had a lot of like uh, ang like anxiety attacks and like stuff like that while like driving. Really, it was like uh, yeah, which is kind of strange. Like that's been some like wild times. So you hear that a lot in my music. Like I said, like, in uh, my new song, Lonely, I said, like, anxiety attacks in the Corvette. So it's kind of related to that. It's kind of the same I thing. I haven't heard the track. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, listen. this is uh, giving okay. a little bit away. But, like, it's the same sort of thing, like, tear stains in the all-black rover. Like, it's like, if you just, like, you just broke up with your girl and you're, like, driving away, what are you going to crank this song on? And you're just going to, like, you know, it was something like that where it was just inspired by, like, I don't know. It was just a memory like that. Sort of, where I was like leaving a, a breakup, just like driving away, like fuck, what just happened? Okay, you know, I can my see life that. is a yeah. mess. <laughs> and then I just like crank, crank the song, like tear stains and all black rover. You know, it's okay, like, it's, right. like, it's like I'm depressed. It's like depressed flex. Like I'm sad, but I'm sad, <laughs> exactly. but I'm, I'm That's sad, what I mean. but I'm lit. You know? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's like yeah, that was really shitty, but I don't care. I'm like still gonna like be all right at the end of the day. So it's like it's like it's, it's the contrast, right? Because you're saying like the guitar is like pretty up tempo, it's like right. kind of upbeat, and like the drums and like the stuff like knocks. It's a good tempo. Exactly. It's like kind of a banger, right. but at the same time, it's like I'm saying some sad shit. <laughs> yeah. Always, I always have to get that sad shit in there. Uh, um, is that just like the nature of your music, 
Yeah. Is that like, does it come off naturally or do you have to make a concerted effort to be like, okay, I still got to add something sad to this? Uh, no, nah, it's usually just like the tone in majority of my songs. Like not all my songs are always going to be sad, but like Agreed. that's just, that's just how I was when I was going through majority of making this project. And now that I like, I made a couple like songs ever since I made like, I can't feel and a couple other songs in this style and they really started taking off. I just like. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go with this. Like, this is, it's like, I mean, I, I always have felt like this. Like, I've always been, like, pretty, like, I've always fought depression and, like, just being sad and lonely and shit like that. But, like, that was when, when like, I made those songs and that was, when, like, when I really found it. And I was like, okay, I just got to go with this. Like, people like it for a reason because they relate to it. And I just, I can't, why would I, like, stop that, you know? Right. And here's the one thing that I definitely got to say about your music. Um, and I think it's, ve- this is very important um your music brings up an emotion that a lot of people i guess especially guys Mm -hmm. maybe have a a bit of trouble dealing with yeah Yeah. which is like your emotions maybe some of the anxieties depression not feeling good yeah and a a lot of the times in hip-hop i feel like we have to be macho men we have to be flex all the time yeah everything's good we're all very egotistical absolutely yeah and I think one thing that your music does is it breaks down that wall, mm-hmm. and it says, "That's a good you know point." What? Like, listen, this is this is how I am sometimes. Yeah. I'm, I don't feel great all the time. I'm not, you know what I mean. I'm not Mr. Macho Man all the time. Yeah. I'm sometimes I'm crying in my in my black rover. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's great. Yeah, I might have a Corvette, but sometimes I'm crying there. I'm having anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I want to crash it off the highway sometimes, you know? Right, exactly. And yeah. I think a lot of us can relate to that, but it's it's an emotion that we... I definitely... I, I'll speak for myself. Yeah. I definitely have struggled dealing with. Yeah. I, it's yeah, it's a that, very real thing in society, especially nowadays. Like, majority of our generation, like, deals with a lot of anxiety and depression. So it's like... Yep. That's like almost everybody that we talk to at this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's a very universal thing, and I think that's why lots of people relate to it. I was also going to say that it, it is, like, very vulnerable and, like, honest compared to lots of songs. Like, lots of people don't want to... Hell do, yeah. Lots of the guys don't want to make a, a rap song where they admit where they're crying or something like that, you right. know? Or they want to kill themselves or anything like that. It's, like, it's not something people always, like, talk about. And it's not like I'm, like, glorifying it or making it seem like it's cool because it's not. Like, none of this shit is cool. It's just, like, my life and, like, what I've been through. So I can't really, like... I have to share my story, you know, and like tell what I've been through. Like, Word. I'd I'd be wrong not to, and so holding myself back. Have you like you said you go through anxiety? Yeah. Have you seen a professional about it? Yeah, yeah. I've seen. I've gone to therapists on and off for a while and shit like that. Word. This is so important for people to hear. Sometimes yeah. you got to go to fucking therapy. Yeah. Don't. Uh, and you know, you can go to the doctor, get prescriptions for whatever, but be smart with whatever you're doing. Like. Lots of kids now, they think, oh, I have anxiety and depression. I'm, like, so sad, so I'm going to take, like, a bunch of Xans or some shit like that. And there's nothing, like, Xanax does help anxiety, you know? Like, it's, it's, really? tr- it's true and shit like that. But that. it's in, like, you got to have moderation. That's the important thing with me. I talk about something like drugs in my songs a decent amount also. Right. And I, I, I want to be a person who, like, puts out, like, I don't want to glorify that shit. Like, nothing that I'm saying in my songs is, like, is, Glorifying. like, something that it's, like, that it's, like, a flex. It's just, like, part of it, and it's just, like, it's just me being honest about that, and I think I want to make people aware that it's, like, you got to be smart, and you got to be cautious, and, like, just, yeah, don't fuck around with that shit, you know? Right. <laughs> like, Word. I think you definitely do touch about, like, drugs and drug use in yeah. your songs, but I never yeah. took it as, like, a, like a flex. Yeah, Or, exactly. like, glorifying. Right. Yeah, it's just, like... Some it's an escape for lots of people, you know. Right, and it's, a, it's a way to get away from depression or suicidal thoughts or anything. Exactly, it's like that's what we use to like run away. But at the end of the day, that's not the answer. You know what I mean? Like, so if you you know therapy and stuff like that helps. So I definitely would advise that to kids who are dealing with the same sort of shit because it helped me a lot. One thing I do, I mean, I fight with the doc because I'm personally being. They're trying to diagnose me with schizophrenia. Yeah. So I deal with like that mental health. Totally. I've definitely gone through episodes of depression. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do find myself, and I'm just getting very personal. No, totally. No. That's cool. <laughs> but like, getting, yeah, like one thing I find myself is fighting with the doctors a lot. Yeah. Because I'm just like, fuck, like just fighting with the whole process itself. Yeah. I find myself doing that a lot. Totally. It, I, it feels like there's something wrong yeah. with me. I have friends who they tell me, you know, they have really bad problems with like their mental health or like, 
And they're like too anxious to go to the doctor to get meds for their anxiety. Like how messed up is that, man? You know? Right. So it's like at the end of the day, we have to like, <laughs> you have to know when it's like, I, maybe I can't do this myself all the time. Maybe I do need someone Some to help. help me or like, but, at, and you don't want to like, like a prescription or something, you know, it can help you. But at the end of the day, you don't want to like rely on any, any. Hell sort of no, like you got to do a lot of it. Like I, I said, feel like, I feel yourself. like anxiety is something that you can try and push th- push through as a person with with or without you know word totally so how do you say how do you deal with those emotions would you say music is one of the yeah yeah music is my outlet you know that's how i like get rid of all of it because i I like to bottle bottle everything up and then if i don't if i don't make a song or like release it or tell anyone eventually i'll just explode you know and i'll just like have a breakdown or something like that so it's it's what i it's kind of necessary for me to use music you know Word. Yeah. One thing that I like me doing the creative process myself, like, mm-hmm. and this is only I only did it for about a year, so it's I'm only yeah. speaking from a very small amount of experience. Yeah. But I remember I would be so obsessed to get this idea out there. Like if I'm feeling an emotion, yeah, I'd be like, man, this would be great to get out in a song. Yeah. Because I kind of like would train my way to think that way. Totally. So I'd be like, okay, I can get this out in a song. But the thing was, it would it would, it would be affecting every other aspect of my life. Because I wouldn't be talking to my friends and family or I wouldn't be dealing with some of the other things that I have yeah. to deal with. Because I'm so obsessed with getting this idea out there that's bottling in my yeah. inside of me. It's yeah. like, no, I got to get this out in a song. There's no other way I can do it. Yeah. Do you find yourself sometimes in that kind of um, in that kind of position where where it's like you're trying to get out in a song, but sometimes it's affecting other aspects of your life? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, or I'll just like won't want to talk about it at all. But uh, I try and like I feel like maybe once once I make the song, I'm a little more like open to it, I guess. Because like oh, I talked about it in a song. I guess I could t- talk to people about it now. I feel like a bit better about it. Like it's released and it's out of my system, so I'm like more okay with talking about it. But like I I could still do it. You know, without the music, but there was a lot of points in my life where I did need it. You know, so sure. you don't want to. Uh, music isn't the only way, and it's it's good to, it's good to try and try and push yourself to do it to friends or family because those people care about you, and they're gonna they can they can help you. <laughs> you know, uh, I definitely blocked that out for a while, but now I'm like more open to it and like want I want to have a good relationship with like family and stuff like that. So I. I pushed myself to really do that you know it's it's not definitely not an easy thing though word w- one thing i wanted to ask is like you talk about a lot of sad topics uh-huh. and if if i was listening to this from an outside perspective i'd be like damn this guy's really going through some shit mm-hmm. so how little do you want people to take your music yeah that's that's a good point um lots of people ask me that they so like message me every once in a while like every time i release a new song or something like hey are you okay like are you're you right. are you doing all right you that was my first you don't emotion seem like when i heard the, the album i was like yo are you okay yeah like i wanted to call you up and be like yo it's all good yeah you're yeah gonna make through it no i'm i'm cool it's just uh you know it's like it's when you go to like your your deepest or your darkest it's like the very like extreme sort of like when you're having like it's like i want to like i want the the listener to really like feel what that anxiety attack feels like or breakdown or whatever it is or heartbreak or like you're like anything like that i want them to really like feel it that's why it's like more extreme or not or like or like over exaggerated almost in a sense because lots of music you know it is like it's over exaggerated it's not exactly the same so sometimes it's i'm not i'll make a sad song and i'm not always sad you know i'll just i'll just do it and I just just because that's what I like to do, and I love writing songs like that. And I'm so used to it now. It's like it's like my groove, and I really fuck with that. But like, it's it's yeah. Lots of the songs are focused. Like I'll go back to certain periods in my life when I try and channel it. Like if I'm happy like today, and I want to make like a sad song, I'll think I'll like put myself back in that position I was back then. You know, I'll be like, oh, I just got to think about this time when I had like a really bad fight here, or I had a really bad night here right and i like take myself back to there to to like channel it 
So uh, yeah, the, the, I guess the question is, I'm all right. Everything is cool. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like channeling a part, a part of myself, like from my memories back in my head. Okay, wait. Sort of, you I know? think that's big for people to hear. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, like let's say somebody might take your music so literal that it's like, mm-hmm. yo, I gotta be sad all the time. No. To make this kind of music. Yeah. It's. I mean, you know, not every day is all right. I'm still down. I still deal with it every day, just like everyone else does. But I try and be like, um, people wouldn't expect. Uh, how like positive and optimistic I am in person right. from my music. It's like a bit different, and I think like interviews and shit like that help. So That's, this is this is a good way for people to know. Yes, and uh, yeah, totally. Well, I definitely want to put that out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's dope that you touch on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, one thing I wanted to ask is like after years of doing music, um, what's your approach as far as like the business side of it in marketing? Mm-hmm. So I, because I noticed you're very good at that. Yeah, you're very good at kind of like putting out your music and and I've seen you do ads for your music. And yeah. So you're very and I, I, it's not like you're ignorant to that side of the yeah the coin, right? Yeah, I'm so, very. Uh, I try and think of myself like also like an entrepreneur and shit like that. You right. know, like I I want to eventually be, make like more of a movement and like a label a collective type thing which we've been working on for a while. So I, I really like the idea of like building building a brand or building a company or building an artist and like developing it and like making something out of nothing. And uh, wait, what was the original question? The again? question is, what's your approach to, to yeah. I guess, that kind so, of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's just like, so I don't like know, just like studying side. the internet too really got me into it. Like finding like, oh, how did I, how did I find like, I don't know, I guess how did I find like weird like subgenres on the internet? Like how I found like, I guess, quote unquote, emo rap or whatever, just like delving through the internet, like two years ago, whatever, I found like Lil Peep and Nothing Nowhere and a couple other artists. And I really got into that. And I guess all of it's just for, for me being an internet weirdo, kind of just like scrolling through the internet and trying to find out everything and like how, how I can like push my music and how I can better it. But like marketing wise, I just try and like, I don't know. I just like do like Facebook ads and shit like that. Or I try and do lots of visuals. I think videos are very important. Um, yeah, I don't know. So what would lots you say like to that. like an up and coming artist that's because they might see somebody like you and be like, yo, you're getting streams. Yeah. Like you're, you're doing numbers. I've seen you on the Spotify numbers. You're doing like 60,000 yeah. 60, monthly. Yeah. Like that's, that's impressive. Yeah. So somebody might look at you and be like, okay, how did this guy do that? Mm. So I, I don't know if you want to give away yeah. all the sec- secrets. Yeah. Um, lots of it, you know, is just the what I, what I tell people is at the end of the day, good music is good music and it's going to reach the right people. Um, lots of the Spotify stuff wasn't in my control. My song, I Can't Feel, really blew up because it got added to a big playlist, the, the teardrop, little peep, uh, okay. dedicated playlist. And... Um, I couldn't submit for that. I didn't send it in or ask to be part of it. They just selected me. So that was just, it's just, you know, it's uh, good music finds its way into the right hands eventually. Word. But I have pushed myself a lot. You know, I find like channels to pre- or like blogs to premiere my shit, you know, like a video or, or a new single or something. So I try and do stuff like that too. But all over the board, I uh, lots of it is just from hard work and uh, consistency. And quality, you know, just make like a lot of good songs and release them at a good rate and don't slow down and put out good visuals and shit like that. I uh, I tried to make like a video, like every uh, release a song in a video, like every month or two and shit like that. So yeah. I've been doing that for over a year now. And I noticed on this project, you have a lot of videos that came out with the songs. Yeah. You have yeah. like four. Yeah, at least. Me, yeah, something like that. Let me check. We did a couple there. before the release, a couple after. You got one for some days. Yeah. You got one for vacant. You got yeah. one for ten toes down, and then continue. Yeah, and then there's a couple other ones on Sad Chill on his channel. On who? Uh, on Sad Chill, it's like a YouTube S-A- channel. Oh, Sad Chill. Yeah. We've got a couple more videos on there. Shout out to Sad Chill. Damn. He's a very nice fellow, Mr. Valentine. Um, he's hosted a couple of my videos. And that lots of here's a tip for artists like Lonely. if you if you're trying to figure out um you know places to get your music to find your lane find your demographic your sound and find like 
blogs or channels that post your similar type of music because that's what I did and it's very important in this day and age. It's also not that challenging to find. You just got to really burden. dig. You just got to dig through the internet. Yeah, Burden just hit 30K. It's my biggest video now, which is pretty dope. Really? Yeah. We filmed that video in about two hours. <laughs> I edited it in like one. That's wild. Yeah, not unplanned. Just went out and did it. <laughs> That's yeah. wild. And I see your music videos are actually very well done. Yeah, I do majority of the editing myself. Really? Uh, on most of them, like Burden I did, and one, some days, Ten Toes Down. But uh, a couple of them I didn't do, like Continue and Minute. I had other videographers, which is cool. I want to work with more videographers in the city and shit like that. Word. But I definitely had experience Putting doing it myself. Into the, into the universe, he yeah. is looking for a videographer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if, you know, if, you need, if you need some, I'm work. always I'm, not, I'm always open to to work with people. You just gotta hit me up. <laughs> you know? Lord. But uh, yeah, I think visuals are important, and I really liked the fact that I did lots of them myself, and it was very like DIY and independent, out the mud, and I could make the video and release it the next day and, and not have to wait on anyone. Another uh, important thing I think is like not relying on a bunch of people like some people be like oh i want to release this song but i'm waiting for the producer to send it back and it's been fucking two weeks you know right but it's like if you just do that shit yourself then it's all right i mean i don't mix or master all my stuff you know but like who makes I, the master yourself it's kind of all over the board depends who produces the song usually okay but i don't do that myself but i do do lots of the visual stuff hmm. yeah interesting yeah that's good. One thing that well, I was gonna ask. Oh, right, your music definitely has changed over the years. Yeah. Um, like even if you go to And One, mm -hmm. that's more like a it's like a playful fun track. Yeah, that's that's actually a pretty fun song. Yeah. Right, and it's like a bang. so what, when did you get into like the more emotional side of yourself? Um, I don't know. I guess it's always been sort of there. It's just the the sound of it, I guess. Because like even when I was Stankowski. I guess I, I still had songs that were like vulnerable and like honest and sad, but not in the same like style, I guess. So it's and that was like that though. yeah. When I collaborated with Bobby on Doubt, I think that was when I really got that was the first song where I really had like that sad boy vibe going, I guess. And then after that, I just like stuck with it. Okay. Every, every song, it was just there pretty much. Yeah. So I guess. Oh, okay, the last two questions I want to ask before we play a track. Okay. Um, how important is an image to, like, an artist? Like, how important is image to you? Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty important. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not everything, you know? You, can, you don't have to have the craziest image in the world to be successful, I don't think, if your music is, is good enough. But at the same time, I feel like nowadays, music is so oversaturated that it's important to, like have a cool image or just like be yourself or like be creative or unique with the way you dress or, or the way you do your hair or anything, you know, it's just like, just, I, it's just be yourself. And that's the best way to be unique, I think. And just do what you've always wanted to do. Like, and just like, that's, that's the way, I guess it's just, just really just not care. But like lots of people are just doing like image stuff just to do it for like attention now which is kind of messed right. up you know like they're taking it overboard and i don't think that's necessary i think just like do whatever you think looks cool or do whatever you want but like i'm not really with lots of the stuff where people are just like famous for their image and then they're also musicians you know i don't really like that shit. you like music first yeah and then the image can kind of help yeah it's, it's like a part of right. it it's like a part of it and it helps and it, it's like it does it's definitely a factor but i don't i've never want that to be the reason I'm famous for. I'm not gonna like diss any like rappers that have blown up or whatever, but I know a lot, like there's a couple that have like pretty much like made it and solidified themselves more off their image and their looks and their actual songs. Okay. Which I don't, that's not what I want, you know? Personally, that's not my aim or anything. But image is 100% very important in 2018. It's like a big factor. I think it's always been a big factor. Yeah. Like even if we go back to some of like the... Like rock bands and yeah, shit. Yeah, absolutely. You get like crazy hair, right. like outfits. And people would, people try to bash how people dress nowadays. Yeah. But it's like, yo, people have been dressing crazy for like the Forever. longest time. Yeah, and it's nothing new. It's just like change. <laughs> it's just like changing and evolving, right? Right. Yeah. It's not like it's not like rappers just started doing this stuff. 
or like or like like face tattoos have been around for a long time it's not like it's a brand new thing like people have had their whole bodies tatted since like as long as tattoos were been invented. around exactly yeah. right yeah that's good uh one thing i wanted to ask is like gaining feedback mm-hmm. and getting feedback from like your audience or whoever it may be yeah. how important is that in your creative process and um how much how much of that do you take into account when you create or do you have to block out the voices when you're going into mm-hmm. the into the booth it's a little bit of both really depending on the song um i like to really get feedback from people and like i just send like usually after i get a draft of a song or finish it, i'll like play it for the homies or play it for my brother or something like that and just be like yo what do you think of this one but a lot of the time, people don't give you, like, real feedback. So they'll just be like, oh, this is sick. Good job, because they're your friend. Exactly. You know? And uh, that's whatever. I, like, I'm kind of used to that, because lots of people do that. But at the same time, I like it when people are, like, more harsh on me and give me actual criticism. Um, lots of artists can't handle it. I think if you can't handle constructive criticism and, like, real criticism, you shouldn't be an artist. Like, it's not, made, it's not made for you. Thank if, you. If you get defensive or say you're wrong... Um, it's very important, you know, you're not going to get better if you can't take criticism or realize what's wrong. What, what I think why I'm sort of succeeding is because I learned from my mistakes and I learned from other people's mistakes and I'm like, oh, they're doing this and it's working. They're doing this and it's not working. And I kind of just like study that and just like, I'm like a very observant person. So I think that's where I kind of get all that from. Or, yeah, hopefully, I think that answered the question. Yes, it yeah. definitely does. And yeah. something that I try, because I, me personally, I do album reviews mm-hmm. and concert reviews or whatever it may be. Yeah. And a, a part of that is getting feedback yeah. to the artist. Yeah. Right? And I think it's, I'm glad that you, someone like you can understand, mm-hmm. like, that's, it's just us trying to give you some feedback. Yeah. I have, uh, you know, that stuff has really helped me. Um, some of the best constructive criticism and feedback I've got was from, like other artists, like uh, Transit Twenty Two, who's like mentored me for a very long time. Shouts out. Um, he's been recording my shit since I was like sixteen and helping me and like getting me gig Word. opportunities and putting on for me and like teaching me like everything he knows. For he's a very been long doing time. that for a lot of artists. Um, lots of people in the city will like throw shade at him or not give him the credit he deserves. But um, if you ask me, he's like one of the uh, first people from Calgary to really like make noise online and in the touring world in the actual like hip-hop community and underground from from calgary like internationally and shit like that so i looked up to him to him a lot you know and that was like how i first got like in a studio and shit in calgary to record was from being a fan of him and going to his show and hearing like oh i work at this studio and then i went there <laughs> fucking five years later now he's like one of my best friends yeah and i think to he me, has a studio know? over at the boys and girls club yeah yeah right That's I, I record that i recorded there for like a long time um my homies like nick Wise and Nick Royal work there, um, making songs and shit. Um, like and that's where I know uh, John and Token. John from and too. yeah, because they record there, yeah. right? So I've met like lots of artists I've known there through the years. Back so in the back John in the day, Token. that spot was called like Beltline and it was at a different location, and it was very lit. There was like many like <laughs> rare exclusive <laughs> ciphers, freestyles, like so many old songs and shit were made there. But it's at a different location now. It's very low key, but. I work there a decent amount still with Transit, and he gives me, like, better feedback than majority people I know. Word. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to ask before we get into a track, I know I've been saying that for a minute now, the mm-hmm. last thing, but mm-hmm. um, what is Timeless Tomorrow, and oh, what yeah. is your, like, association with them? What is yeah. that? So Timeless Tomorrow is a collective. Um, it's run by me and my brother, pretty much. Brett, he like designs all like all the clothes and stuff like that. We Shout got, out to Brett. We got hoodies, hats, um, and lots of people think t- right now that Timeless Tomorrow is just a clothing line, but it's also a music collective. You That's know, what I thought we got, at first. We got me, uh, Nick Royal, Nick Wise, Anthony Almighty, and a couple of other friends and producers and stuff that all help out and are like part of the crew. But it's like it's just like a collective in a movement, I'd say, of just artists. You know? Yeah. Would you consider it like a record label? No, I wouldn't say it's like an actual label yet. You know, it's just more just like a collective, like Odd Future or something. You know? Okay. But uh, right. it's um, yeah, we've been just been like tight for a long time with lots of those guys, and it was just like a way to solidify ourselves as a group, I guess. Because originally it was like supposed to be one of my album titles, 
Timeless Tomorrow. That's how originally I came up with it. And then as soon as I told that title to Brett, he's like, this is too cool of a name. It's too big of an idea to just be an album. So we're like, it sounds like a brand or like a company. So yeah, that's how we came up with Timeless. We've got new Timeless Tomorrow merchandise and stuff that will be available at the show on the 9th. We're going to have some Lone Sun hats. Uh, they're like, uh, we've got like some black hats and some white hats. They say like Lone Sun, Timeless Tomorrow, 9597 on them. So we're making some new Timeless gear. We should have some hoodies and stuff too. Or so, Hell yeah. I just wanted to like oh, give people awareness on the show. Hopefully it's out before then. I don't know. No, it, well, it no, it should be out before okay. the night. Hell yes. Yeah. Well, well, definitely. I'll get on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you have a... Sh well, I guess we'll, we'll say this... That, yeah, I guess that's the, like, the last thing. Probably, okay, before we get into anything, okay, I want to play a track, though. Oh, yeah, okay, all right. So what track do you want to play? Um, Play... Let's play Burden. Burden? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's play Burden. <laughs> This burden in me stirring, tossing, turning, working on a better me. Is it worth it? Worth it? You deserve it. That's what she said, but she's perfect. I'm the one she'll regret. Whoa, there, don't you go there. That's what she said. No fair, you don't know where I've been sleeping. No care, you were nowhere. Blank and speechless. She's perfect, I'm the one she'll regret Memories on re-read, we can reset Drowning in the deep end, every weekend I've been searching, I've been seeking Fighting demons, needing something to believe in Need a reason, so stay with me, little bit. Don't play with me, no games, no way So stay Perfect. 
One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, we're back. All right. So like I was saying to you, um, I was listening to this this morning. Huh. And I was just like, this is exactly how I feel. Yeah. Like I wasn't expecting me to relate to it that much. Yeah. But it's like once I was in that mood, I was like, God damn. Like this is exactly how I feel today, this morning. Facts. Like a burden that I'm carrying. Like uh, that. that how, what was your thought process when you made that track? Oh, damn. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I don't even remember where I wrote it. But I remember, like, the recording process was really sick because, like, I was in Vancouver working on uh, Transit's new album, Dark Day, Good Morning, and uh, we got some extra studio time on the last day there, and I got to record this track. And I think I, think I had written it maybe, like, a week before in Calgary. And uh, I don't know what it was. I just, like, really get in the zone when I'm writing... You know, right. like, I just, like, I'll put on the beat and just, like, loop it a million times and just pace around my room till it's all done. <laughs> like, I'm just, like, mumbling to myself probably for, like, 45 minutes, or, like, 30 minutes. But, like, lots of my best songs come to me really quickly. Like, like this one, Burden, I Can't Feel. And a couple others I wrote, like, hella fast. It just, it just comes to me. You so know? what comes first? Is it, like, the melody or is it, like, the lyrics or yeah, what really usually comes like first? The, Usually, like, a melody. Like, I just, like, the beat comes on, and I'll just start, like, humming or, like, singing along to it, kind of, and just doing whatever. And then sometimes I'll have, like, uh, like a reference word, sort of, like uh, like some end rhymes, like, that I want to use to, like, to start off the verse sort of thing. Or I'll have, like, some, like, sometimes when I'm just, like, walking or driving, I just get, like, random lines in my head. Or like, oh, this would be cool if I said in a song. Or like, oh, we should talk about this. So I'll just like write it in my notes. And then whenever I find the B and I'm like getting ideas, I'll like kind of go through there and see if I have anything. Word. But lots of the times I'll just like, it just, come, it just comes out. As soon as I get some melodies, I'll like come up with the melody and then just try and fill it with the words after. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like lots of my friends, when they record, they'll just like pretty much like mumble melodies on a beat. They yeah. Just like start singing, like, uh, and then and then after you like fill it in with the words. Right. But that 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 song specifically, burden. I knew. I think I wrote like the lyrics and shit first. Okay. But it was just like super catchy as soon as I heard it, and I was just talking about like a lot of shit that was going on. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 like kind of all in there. Just. Yeah, I don't know how to how to describe it really that well. It was just well, and let's say when you get into the booth, like it's like a zone. So it's like when you're in, it's like when you're in and out. It's like hard to you know. I just like lock in. Like in sports, okay. you mean to say like, yo, you're in this. Yeah, he was he was in the zone. In the zone right. Like it's like that. But yeah, when I was recording it, that was like really crazy because I did like I really tried to like push myself like to do more, like higher layers and like harmonies and. Um, even the background vocals and stuff weren't added. Some of it wasn't added till I got back to Calgary. So I really spent, like, took my time on it. Like, the original version I did in Vancouver wasn't the same as the version I did after. Okay. Like, I changed. I added some ad libs and, and shit. But, yeah. That was one that just, like, came together pretty quickly, I'd say. Word. Yeah. I want to get into, like, uh, the actual, the project. Yeah. Uh, specific tracks. My favorite tracks off of the off of Lone Sun will be Ghosts, Demons, yeah. Some Days, I Can't Feel, Minute, Continue, Ten Toes Down, and Blue and Black. Word. So those yeah. are like my favorite tracks. That's sick. I like those ones too. And I'd say most of the tracks that were like they had like somewhat of a like a upbeat instrumental. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the ones that I gravitated yeah. towards the most. Yeah. Although some that of the tracks, sense. some of the tracks towards the middle, though, like some days and I can't feel, uh, those tracks I I found myself liking a lot more. Yeah. Even burden, I'll say, like burden definitely grew on me. Yeah. The more I listened to it, it's uh, it's uh, something about the chorus that's like really catchy. Exactly. Like you can just kind of like hum along to it. Yeah. Exactly. Word. Yeah. Um, and ghosts and demons, you say you need hope. Yeah. Something to believe in. Yeah. So what keeps you hopeful? Um, that things are going to, like, get better, and I'm not always going to 
feel like this like eventually someday I won't like feel like empty or vacant inside like like the hope that like eventually things like work themselves out more you know and uh that's kind of like a talking to like faith and stuff too which right. I battle a battle with a bit you know right that's and, like that's what I was wondering like yeah, cuz then like raising like a a religious household sometimes you feel like you don't have any like hope or faith like sometimes you feel like it's not there so I guess that kind of goes along with that line. Do you consider yourself religious? Yeah, I would say I still I still am, you know, not the same extent I was like raised and like grew up into, but right. like spirituality and stuff like that is still a big part of my life. Like I still definitely have faith. Word. Or try to, yeah. In the show. Word. Um, is there anything in specific that keeps you like hopeful? Is there like a goal in mind that you have that? Yeah, it's just. I mean, I. Uh, just the, the hope that like I'm gonna I'm really like living out my dreams and like going further and further every day and I could have the opportunity to like speak for more and more people and like touch more people's lives and like inspire people and have people relate to it and like I get lots of messages from like kids saying that they listen to my song and it makes them feel less alone or like they're the only one who doesn't feel the way I feel they think they're the only one who feels like that so stuff like that too is like really important to me you know Word. Yeah. Um, and some days you say demons in my in my dreams got me waking up in hell. Oh well, oh well, I got used to how it feel. Yeah. Like what kind of demons do you deal with? Yeah. And like where do they stem from? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. It's um well the okay, so like Lone Sun, this is gonna get fair, fairly personal. But That's like, fine. Lots That's of Lone Sun. Uh, some people actually yeah. Anyways, Lone Sun is like lots of it it comes from like a very a certain specific period of my life where like uh last year my dad passed away rest in, in uh in august yeah rest in peace dad and uh that happened like at the end of august into september of last year and then you know we we're living uh we li i lived with him and i was alone for a while at that house by myself and with my girlfriend at the time and I was just, like, going crazy, you know? So lots of these songs are about that time, like, when I was trying to, like, cope with that and grieve with that. And then and then we broke up. I broke up with my girlfriend. So there's another thing. I'm even more alone in this house, like, by myself. And I was, like, I, was, like, I say, uh, in vacant, I say, someone get me the fuck up out of this basement. Yeah. I was literally in my basement in my house when I wrote that after my dad had died and after my, like, after I broke up with my ex and shit like that. And like, so it's just like, that's, that was like a real time. Like I was very, that was like my lowest point. That was when I thought about like driving off the highway and shit like that. All this is like from the same, um, same moment in time when I was dealing with grieving with my dad's death and dealing with my first real breakup put together. That's what Lone Sun is a lot about is, is coming to terms with all of that. So that's, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of demons from, from that shit. Like I definitely was changed after that happened to me, you know? And after that, after those two, that's when I started making the songs like I Can't Feel and Toxic and Doubt. And this is the, all the ones that have taken me to what's happened in the past six months. So it's like crazy how everything happens. But right. like, but like I went through like the worst time in my life and I'm, I've like turned such a negative, terrible, like hurting experience into something beautiful and like made it making a career out of it with my music and, and shit. And that's the beauty of, I want to say, music in general, yeah. but I want to say definitely hip hop. Yeah. Um, it's taking those experiences that like usually would break somebody yeah. and being like, you know what? Nah, this is going to be like what's going to propel me forward. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we can't expect that kind of shit to happen. Mm -hmm. It just comes out of nowhere. But I feel like yeah. if you can push past that 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 wall, yeah, it'll be like psh, sure. you're gone after that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can push past that, then you'll be fine. Uh huh. Because that'd be like the worst just you got to deal with. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like what's gonna be worse than like you losing your dad? Yeah, exactly. So it's like anything from there is just gonna feel easy for you. Mm -hmm. At least and that's the way I think. Yeah, totally. No, I agree. And when I talk about, like, demons and stuff, it's from lots of that, like, having, like, uh, sleep problems and, like, nightmares and trauma and shit like that. Just from the overall experience of all that shit. So that was, you know, therapy was important with all that, too. So that was, that played a big role in me, like, understanding all of this. Like, I'd literally go to therapy and, like, talk about all this stuff with my therapist and then, like, go to the studio right after. Where right. I'd be like, wow, I have a lot more, like, closure or, like, um, understanding of the situation 
when what's going on there's two things that's going on in my mind right now one thing is like uh my last podcast mm-hmm. uh i had a uh, young poppy bonito shout outs to kareem pierce young poppy bonito mm-hmm. um if you haven't checked out the podcast the last episode he was on there check it out he actually lost his mother mm. like this year as well damn and uh yeah and like a lot of the music was was coming out from that experience yeah so that's why that I'm talking to somebody else who also lost yeah. one of their. It's their a very, parents. it's a very, it's a very uh, real thing that happens to a lot of kids, and it's nothing no one should ever have to go through. Like, have to bury their own parent is not right. You that's know? fucked. And see that shit is, is not cool. You know, um, I definitely uh, feel for anyone going through that shit, but it brings people together. Like, I could definitely relate relate to that. And uh, I've made friends with other artists um, in the scene and shit like that. Like uh, Convolk, who's featured on I Can't Feel. Okay. He actually lost his mother. And we kind of like uh, bonded and like talked a bit over that, you know? So stuff like that is like, it's fucked up. But at the end of the day, it, like it makes people who they are. And it's like a part of their story. And it's a, it's cool that it, like music can bring people together through that and shit. Right. Yeah. Word. One thing that... Uh, that young Papa Benito was telling me was like not allowing that to define himself. Yeah. What do you think about that idea? Like the death itself? Yeah, like not allowing that. Do you think it's yeah. like it already that's, has that's, defined That's you? some stuff that's like that type of shit can like um, like sit with someone forever, you know, for the rest of their life. So I, I agree. You know, you can't, you can't sit on it forever. Eventually you have to like come to terms and like accept everything and kind of just get yourself to move forward, you know? You can't uh, like grieving, like sit on things forever like that. It's just not maybe it's not, not healthy. Not grieving, obviously. Like the, the closest I've gone to it is like my my dad. He up and left. Yeah. So he like he didn't die. Yeah. Which is a little different. Yeah. But he's like he's not in my life. Mm-hmm. So, um, and maybe that's why I'm inter- I end up interviewing people that have lost one of their parents. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you maybe the energy is <laughs> similar, some shit like that. Yeah. Um, but but like, it's like. Not allowing that to like hold you down, but definitely you can recognize that yeah. as being like a, a part of you. Like, man, like I've gone through this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And always keeping that in perspective. Yeah, for sure. Like maybe maybe you can be like, because you're spiritual, right? Maybe you'd yeah. be like, maybe your dad's watching you and he's yeah. helping you throughout all totally, of this that's yeah. going on, right? And I feel like I'm just like doing everything he would have wanted for me. Like this is, you know, he's probably looking down happy that I'm like doing what I'm doing now. Word. So, yeah. Well, in, in some days you also say <coughs> that I, I'm just hoping for someone to feel my pain. Yeah. And the minute you say, I just hope somebody can relate. Yeah. What do you hope to accomplish by sharing your pain with others? Um, I guess like what I said about like, I, I don't want like people to feel like they're alone and stuff like that. And that's why I want people to relate. Cause like, that's all I like the fact that, that I can like express myself and tell my story. And then this many people relate to it is just like, the coolest thing so i don't know it's like i guess that i don't know i don't know the exact reasoning why it's just like i guess it just makes me feel less alone <laughs> like people understand me you know right like they get it and do you That's ever cool. have people come up to you and say like yo this track like i related to it so much like yeah lots of like uh instagram dms and shit like that someone would be like yo uh, there was this one kid, he was like 14 or something like that. He's like, yo, your line about your dad like really touched me. My mom overdosed like last year or some shit. I'm like, damn, this kid is 14 and he's like listening to my song and, and like thinking about this. I'm like, it's unreal. And, the, you know, stuff like that just makes me feel like, yo, I cannot stop. Like, I, there's no way I can go back. I have to like be there as a voice for these kids. And that's all I ever wanted, you know, was to like be a voice for the voiceless almost. Yeah. Word. That's dope. I'm yeah. glad that you recognize that kind of responsibility. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a yeah, lot of artists... Yeah, there's, there's lots of artists who don't realize the impact that they can have and the influence they have on um, anyone who's listening to their music. So I think it's important to be aware. Word. Yeah. And I definitely... I, I agree. You definitely are that voice for people who are going through that kind of pain. Yeah. Like... Yeah, for sure. Like, definitely relate to that. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, bro. Um, continue. Yeah. That track felt good. Yeah, felt like that's a, that's different. That felt like a better, like a more upbeat. Yeah. Like uh, okay, a little light in the darkness. Yeah, there's gonna be um some more of that style of stuff. You know, um, it's uh, 
that was one of the ones where I'm writing about moving on and and moving forward and finding finding someone new and that that's one of my favorite songs on there for sure. Yeah, that's one, that's of, one of my favorite songs ones. too. Like yeah. I really like that track. Yeah, and I like it's like I say. Uh, Everything will be fine even when I'm not with you. So just continue. Just keep going. Everything's going to be okay. It is a good, that song is a really nice message. That's why I like it a lot. And it's like, like that saying, like, if you're going through hell, just keep going. Word. Yeah. And I think there was perspective on that track, which, yeah. I, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Definitely. It's like you're not the only one going through the problems. Mm -hmm. Right? Everyone's like, got them. Everyone's got them. Exactly. Yeah. That's why, yo, if you can get more tracks like that, that would be yeah. dope. That's, that, that's a very universal message on that one. I like that. That's like, I want to make a lot more songs with that because I feel like it's such a, just like a an easy thing for people to understand and enjoy. And it has such a feel good vibe to it, that one. It doesn't make you feel so sad. You could like uh, pre-drink to it or something. Like turn up yeah, with your friends. Yeah, exactly. Play it at a party. Yeah. Same with like Ten Toes Down and Going Up. And Yo, Ten Toes like Down that. is my shit. Yeah. <laughs> that Ten track is down. my shit. Yeah. Ten Toes Down is very underrated. Uh, if you haven't heard it, go listen to that because it's like the least streamed song on Lone Sun, which oh, makes me down? very sad. Really? Oh, wait, no, Going Up is. It's oh, second, it's second, but go, yeah. But still, which it's one, it's one of the most slept on songs. Which one's sure. Going Up? It's uh, right before that on the track list. How does it go? You, you going, gotta remind me. Uh, pull it up, pull it up, all night going, going up. up. Going, going up, up. lately ship and blowing up. Oh blowing up. yeah, yeah, and that's a very really lit song too. I made both of those one to boy huh. jam. The the two ones he produced are right after each other. Uh, vac I mean not vacant. Growing up and ten and ten down. down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Maybe maybe everyone's just like they know you make sad shit that they go for you for that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe they just like the sad shit more, but. Ten so, toes down. So how does that? Because that puts you in a position, right? Yeah. Because then, and I, I feel like this is with any artist that makes a specific kind of music. Yeah. I think that puts you in a position where it's like people are expecting this from you now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what happens when you maybe reach another point in your life? Yeah. When you're not feeling like that anymore. Yeah. Or maybe you want to touch on like happy content. Let's yeah. say you get married one day. Yeah. Or let's say you buy a house for your yeah. mother or some shit you know what i mean or like yeah i don't want to be like i'm not gonna be like this forever you know exactly I, uh well i think I there's think, always gonna be pain i think i think yeah exactly and i think i think people like the story of like oh he was down and he was like not doing so good and he went through a lot but then he made it and now look at him he's happy and rich so if that's what my aim is like now i'm like sad and depressed and broke but like someday i can be like rich and happy and like married with a mansion or some shit hopefully you know so i think that's like the step after that <laughs> hopefully Word. then then i can make get on some like more fun like anthem songs that are like just like happier i guess so i don't know i don't really know where the future will take me but that's where i hope i guess okay yeah so do you feel a responsibility to make those kind of sad songs even if you're not feeling like you kind of test on that before. I, like, I love writing sad songs. Yeah, I love it. Like the the way I get to use like the way I can use imagery and like in those songs and like um, talking about the new single "Lonely" again. I know you haven't listened to it, but like it is like a we cool, can play it. Yeah, we should play it at the end. Okay, right we'll play it at we the end. Um, it's uh, it's got like it's a bit of both. Like it, that's what lots of the comments are saying that I've noticed. It's like, it's yeah, he's like sad again and it's still sad and chill, <laughs> but it's like, um, more upbeat and like the guitar on is like kind of happy. It's like more of a pop punk vibe, less of like a emo, uh, darker vibe. Okay. So it's like, it's a cool spin on it. I think if, if we're thinking about where I'm going and like, finding more of a middle ground it's a very right. good middle ground okay let's yeah. play the track then that'd yeah. be a perfect segue into playing the track let's play yeah. it sick give me two seconds lonely produced yeah. by dunno yeah. all right let's hear it I know you get lonely, I get lonely too I can't help it, you are all that I knew All that we've been through, everything we do Now you don't even know me, I don't know me too You can save me, boo, let me face my tomb Locked inside this room, broke my heart in two Anxiety attacks in the Corvette Broke down in the rain on your door 
doorstep Heartbreak put me through a fucking vortex Couldn't get you out my head or my cortex I can forget when you kiss me on the forehead Late night sound like vortex Now I'm only your ex And you're my muse Wasting away my youth What's the use when the stars in the sky Ain't gonna change They just fade away When it's dark outside I can see your face I could hear your name So I park my ride By your old driveway Just to drive away again It's hard each time Cause I'd wish you'd stay To do it all again And now you get lonely I get lonely too Don't know where my mind at Running plays through my brain like a back. Maybe if you were still here I could find that But we passed a peak, we hit a climax See me shining like a star in the sky now Feeling far and I only wonder why now While I'm high in my ride with my eyes low Riding around system loud, ducking 5 -oh. Where'd the time go, baby, where'd the time go? Switching time zones, I might get my mind blown Hope you're fine though, I hope you're fine I've been out here, I've been really getting mine And the stars in the sky ain't gon' change They just fade away When it's dark outside, I can see your face I could hear your name So I park my ride by your old driveway Just to drive away again It's hard each time and I wish you'd stay To do it all again I know you get lonely, I get lonely too I can't help that you are all that I knew All that we've been through Everything we do now You don't even know me, I don't know me too You can save me, boo, let me face my tomb Locked inside this room blessed all right check one two and two okay we're back hold up my brother's giving me a call should i pick up it's up to you man no nah, i gotta yeah. i gotta i gotta i gotta not pick up because i'm i get a guest so not to <laughs> all right I, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to you have to wait he's gonna have to wait sorry <laughs> one um okay i do want to switch it up i now this is gonna be very different. Yeah. But you told me specifically that you used to rap over like Biggie Smalls yeah. instrumentals. Right. So I, I want to throw like a uh, kick in the door, and I want to see what you got, whatever you got. All right. With the TD Cashback Visa Infinite Card, earn cash back fast on everyday purchases. Whatever you got. <laughs> Turn up a little bit. That's as high as it goes. Hey, 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 hey. I uh, kick in the door, uh, kick to the floor, say I uh, want some more, I uh, just do this every day, every night, I shut the show down, all the time when I'm on the mic, spit it in the light, get it right, pass it to the left, uh, ballin' and I, uh, you know, I uh, got the tech and I uh, got no refs, uh, what did you expect, uh, got this ice up on my neck and it's dripping oh. and it's wet, uh, I be ballin' like a vet, uh, shoot your shot, take a stab, uh, hey. yeah, got it raining, it's so wet, uh, yeah, I got pluses on my checks. I be running up, uh, hit them with the thunderstruck. Hey, hey, I be getting numb as fuck. Hey, coming in and I'm in the club, in the cut, and I'm smoking on the indica. What the fuck? Hey, hit them with the with the step back. Hey, I'm feeling jet lagged, heading up to LA. I'm out in Cali. I was out in Chaparral. We was in the valley. I was smoking with my homies, chilling in the alley, and I met a nice bitch. Think her name was Sally. Uh, I count them up like a tally, pulling up, and I'm chilling with my homies, and we spark them up. We got the Dutch, we got the Dutch. Hey, hey, I don't give a fuck. I just kill it uh, every single time, and I'm thrilling. Yeah, I do it for the thrill, ain't pop pillin', drop the ceiling, coming through, man. Oh, what a feeling, and we out. <laughs>
<laughs> God damn it. Knew it. I knew this guy was I, I, I fucking the... knew this shit. I knew this that guy was, was That was kind of rusty, but. <laughs> that was I have, fucking dope. What? I have it, I haven't rapped on a beat like that since like grade nine. No, that was <laughs> dope. You still got it. That was Not bad. Dope. I kind of caught a little bit of flow. Yeah, there. you did. That was dope. I like the Yo, I'm really glad you did that. That's just like some of that. No, that's rare, bro. <laughs> Very rare. That's dope. All right, perfect. Is there anything that you want to set good energy to? Anything you want to let the people know what you got coming up? Uh, anything yet? Anything that's coming up for you? Yeah. Um. Go check out Lonely. Follow me at. It's James Colt on everything, pretty much like Instagram, Twitter at It's James Colt, or just search James Colt. Uh, check out the album Lone Sun, you know, give it a listen. And uh, if you like what you hear, come out to the show. If you're in Calgary, November 9th, I'll be playing at the Palomino with a couple other locals, some of my homies, and it's going to be a good time. So, yeah. Or November 9th, Palomino, James Colt going to be there. Who else is going to be there? Fuji Frank, I Fuji think. Frank, Lemmy G, and Nate Lesko. Word. So definitely yeah. coming out to that. We will be out there reporting live to you guys. And yeah, with that being said, this is the Hip Hop Heads Podcast. Thank you, everybody. Peace. Peace. Ooh, that was good. Sick. Yeah, I wasn't...